This is O'Reilly Media. We're here at Oracle's Open World, and we're sitting with Duncan Mills. He works for Oracle. He's based in London. Thanks for joining us. Could you tell us a little bit about what you do for Oracle? Sure. My primary job at Oracle is as a product manager and architect within our tools division, so looking after tools and frameworks. Um, but then in my spare time, I do a bit of work on Hudson as well, which is why I'm here today. Okay, tell me a bit about what is your involvement with the Hudson project? Well, I'm one of those kind of in, in people behind the scene who um, doesn't work on the direct coding, but I do a lot of the website work and the wiki work. And right now, my big job is the uh, migration across to Eclipse. So that's uh, got a lot of little tasks we have to do to move both the code base and all the other infrastructure across onto uh, the Eclipse Foundation's uh, websites and so on. So just a little bit of background, Hudson used to be hosted at java.net and now it's moving to the Eclipse Foundation? That's right, yeah. Well, it's actually going to be still partially hosted at java.net, um, so the core of Hudson is moving um, into Eclipse. So that'll be the, the Hudson core itself and, and what we call the kind of the, the tier one primary plugins that everyone uses like you know, Maven and uh, the other source control plugins. Um, and so that is going to Eclipse. But then, of course, there's a very large plugin community outside of the stuff that belongs to that core project. And so to allow people the flexibility, there's also going to be, if you like, a Hudson plugin home at java.net still. And we'll still have infrastructure there to, to build and manage those plugins and get them to the update center. So you'll see this kind of hybrid of the core Hudson itself being delivered out of the Eclipse infrastructure and being an Eclipse download with a certain set of plugins, and then of course you can just add in whatever other plugins you're interested in from java.net. Okay, so tell me a little bit about the motivations. Why did you move to Eclipse? Well, it's all about really providing stability and providing a neutral place for Hudson to go and live, right? I mean, we don't want Hudson to get bogged down and associated with a single company. There's lots of companies involved with Hudson now. And so it's a matter of, well, where, where can we go that's going to provide the kind of neutrality, it's going to provide the very um, strong IP process, which we think is so essential, and procedures around that. So, you know, a lot of what we're doing right now inside Hudson is all of the IP cleanup and understanding exactly um, what libraries have been used, uh, what libraries shouldn't be used, and so on. And so we get into a state where the, the Hudson product itself is something that any company can pick up comfortably, knowing that from an IP perspective, you know, there's no trouble lurking in the dark corners there. Okay, so, so specifically, what are the problems in terms of the licensing, in terms of the code? What are the so, so, some of the things that you found fixed and addressed? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a whole variety of things. So it's, it's simple things like you know, finding 15 different ways of doing logging within the code base, which obviously is a candidate for just cleaning up. So you know, making the product leaner and meaner, that's always a good thing. But then there's also multiple versions of the same libraries, where one plugin is using one version, another is using another. And then, of course, we get into areas like you know, unfriendly licenses, and be, be they GPL or LGPL, which may cause pe problems for people down the road, um, particularly if they're going to be hosting their own services or trying to redistribute. So there's that side. There's also, frankly, a lot of code in there which just doesn't really have any license. You know? there, there's no particular IP associated with it. We've got to track all of that down and work out, well, who does this code really belong to? Can we actually reuse it? You know, is that OK? Um, under what circumstances was that code given into the project? And so there's a lot of detective work almost going on to understand all of this. We're dealing with something around 192 separate libraries within the core Hudson distribution, which is a huge number. And every single one of those, and this is what's keeping me busy for the last um, three or four months really, has to go through this IP process that uh, Eclipse have. And it's a bit painful, but it's definitely worthwhile because we've got a much cleaner code base at the end of it and you know we've got that level of confidence that hey yeah I can you know let someone have this and use this product and they're going to know that exactly this is the list of, of licenses that are embedded um, it's safe to reuse in you know whatever their circumstances are so just to be clear you're focused on the core of Hudson and you've selected what eight or nine core plugins that you're going to support That's right it's really a matter of well what's you know 90% of the uh, the users out there using and these are what we call the tier 1 plugins so there's things like maven and um, subversion and uh, the uh, git plugin of course so these core plugins that you know in most cases you're always going to want um, so they are part of that core distribution, just so the experience when you download and just you know, kick off Hudson to run it, you've probably got most of the stuff you need. And then it's only um, if you've got you know, some 
additional bit of processing you want to build into your CI lifecycle, you have to go away and get a plugin for that. So it makes it easy for people to get started, but of course they've still got the flexibility to plug in whatever they want into the system, you know, be it some kind of code analysis tool or fancy plugin for changing the UI, whatever it happens to be. How many people within Oracle work on Hudson? Within Oracle itself, we've got about uh, six of us working on Hudson right now. So that's across, um, you know, some people are working part-time, some people are working full-time on that. We've got QA engineers on it, which is really a, a big thing, I think, for the um, user base out there, understanding that we've got full-time QA resource working on uh, a product like this to really ensure that every release we put out is fully tested and has gone through some kind of regression cycle. So I say it's all about trying to get Hudson in a state that's really going to be enterprise ready. It's not the kind of thing that um, is just used by odd developers anymore. It's really becoming a strategic part of a lot of people's development processes in, in the big sense. And you know, you want to have the understanding and the, uh, I guess, the comfort that this thing's going to be reliable. When I upgrade to this new version, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work for me and my development process isn't going to grind to a halt because it breaks some previous job. So in terms of core, what are the changes that you've made in the last few months? So, so far in core, the core focus, excuse the pun, is all about cleaning things up. So we've done a huge number of bug fixes in the last uh, three or four months. I think it's something about 500 bug fixes in core and those tier one plugins just to kind of tidy things up a bit before we move into Eclipse. Some of that, of course, is just using newer versions of libraries or um, moving on to uh, libraries with a better license that, that do the same job. Um, and then we're really laying down the, the foundation for some of the, the stuff we've got planned for what will be the Hudson 2.2 release, which will be the first release under Eclipse, where we are really beginning to focus on some of these enterprise use cases. So, so in terms of a roadmap, is there, is there a long-term roadmap for where you want to take us? Ab absolutely. So one of the things we've been doing over the last few months is uh, a regular community meeting where people have been able to just call into the meeting and you know, give us some ideas about what's important to them within Hudson. And from that, we've actually put together um, a formal roadmap. This is actually, again, this comes back to you know, one of the benefits of the Eclipse Foundation is that they have a very well-defined process for a release. And um, as part of that, you know, they expect you'd have a roadmap and a plan. And so it does force you somewhat to think ahead. You're not just throwing out releases because it's a sunny day. You know, you're actually doing it for a reason. You've got a goal in mind. Um, so we've been able to put together a roadmap which describes exactly what we think are the, the key features to put into the product. And they're all around this kind of enterprise um, area. And I can go into those if that would be interesting. Yeah, I mean, talk about some of the big things that you're trying to do with, with the project going forward. Right, so I think that the biggest thing, again, you know, harking back to this enterprise theme is, you know, Hudson is a great product, but it's really, I guess, focused at this point in time at the work group, right? We're assuming a very um, contiguous set of developers who, they may be working on a variety of projects, but, but broadly, you know, there's, there's no consideration for resource balancing across that. Now, put yourself in kind of the shoes of someone trying to run a, uh, you know, a whole development group where you've got you know, conflicting requirements when it comes to how much resourcing, how much machine time you can give to different groups. Um, and so what we're doing now with um, this newer version of Hudson is exploring how we can actually make it more enterprise ready in that respect. So you know, allow for um, a better partitioning, a better security model, allow for you know, throttling on one set of developers because another set is about to roll out a release and they need more resource to do their testing or whatever. So it's working through features like that and features like enterprise security integration, single sign-on integration, that kind of thing. So it's very much focused on you know, that much larger, much more scalable kind of environment, which we think is really where all the traction is in the CI space right now. This is where companies are getting very excited. So this is my last question. Essentially, I want to know if I'm interested in Hudson, there's a lot going on. There's a, there's a lot of talk about Hudson and Jenkins. What do I need to know about Hudson and how do I get started? Well, I mean, obviously the best thing always to do is to download it and have a play. It's a very accessible product. So you can go um, either to the hudsonci.org website or you can also go to the new um, eclipse.org slash Hudson website. Both of those will get you to the same place, essentially. You can download Hudson and have a quick play with it. You can run it from the command line with no other software. So that's a great place to start. 
To help you though, there's a lot of extra information. It's just not a matter of running it and trying to work out what it does. We've got um, some great documentation within the Hudson Wiki, which again is accessible from those URLs. And in the pipeline available very soon, we'll have a whole book which is uh, focused on um, using Hudson, which is a fantastic resource, which I think will really help people get up to speed quickly with the technology. So we're very excited about that. All right, great. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Tim.